Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You are worthy to be praised, O God. Hallelujah. Two, he tells Moses, put down the staff. And he says, now pick it back up. Pick it back up. Come on. Get back in here, y'all. I know. I know. As soon as we say it, we had a great connection. Then the connection wanted to act up. Lord have mercy. That's how he does things. Because he 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 don't know how to he don't know how to do stuff. He always trying to mess with somebody. But we're gonna keep on going in Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're gonna keep on going in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So so the word says that. Uh, in Exodus chapter 4, that he told, uh, God told Moses to throw, hey, to throw the, um, throw down the staff. He said, throw down the staff. And we know that the Bible says that the staff turned into a snake, turned into a snake. Now, uh, this is what I want to say to you, that often you are carrying something and connecting, connected to something. You don't even know what it is. You don't even know what it is that you you are connected to and holding in your hand. You have come into relationship and attachment and association with things. You aren't even uh, clear about really what it is you are in relationship with. Uh, a, 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 a sheep in wolf's clothing, so to speak. So you have connected with something that is not representative they they have come in a mass they have come pretending to be one thing that they really are not amen good morning good morning please tag someone please share in the name of jesus please invite someone so our first connection went bad so you'll have to go back and get what the lord was saying in the beginning um of of exodus chapter four starting in verse 1 through verse 5. And when Moses comes to God and he says, uh, what if they don't believe me? What if they don't believe that I had an encounter with you, that uh, you visited me? What if they don't believe me? And God said, uh, take the staff. Take the staff and, 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 and take it with you. And he tells him to throw it down. He tells him to throw it down, put it on the ground, throw it down. And then we know that the staff turns into a snake. And this is where we're continuing and picking this up. We are picking this up here in this text where God tells him to throw it down. And Moses throws it down. He lets go of what he has in his hand so that he can receive the instruction that God has for him for his life. That's a word for somebody right there. You got to let it go so that you can get what God has for you. You have to let go what you have been leaning on, what you have been connected with, what you have been participating in so that you can have what God has for you. What is your crutch? What is your staff? What is the thing that you have been depending on? What is the thing that you need to let go of so in 2018 you can go free so that you can be new, so you can live the life that God has for you. Forgiving someone. Too easily offended. Just everything offends you. You got to let stuff go. You got to let some stuff roll off your back. Everybody ain't after you. Everybody ain't hating you. Everybody don't have something against you. Listen to me. Some of that stuff you are creating because of past hurts. You are reflecting and deflecting based on other experiences you've had with other people. That person ain't them. And they really don't mean you no harm. Just because they are correcting you or speaking something into your life that you don't want to hear. But you, but you want to keep holding on to an offense. And God says you got to let that offense go. You must forgive in this season. Not forgiving so that you can uh, be mistreated. Not forgiving so that you can feel like you a punk and you gave in to that. No, forgive so that you can be free. Forgive so that you can be free. God wants you to be free today. Moses throws it down and, and uh, he says, um, he says now, uh, God says, so that they will believe you, uh, God and their fathers, the God of Abraham. I This is what I'm going to do. So he takes Moses through all these tests. Put your hand in your pocket, all that. He said, take it out, take it out. And then God says in verse 8, if they do not believe you or pay attention to these signs, he said, 
I'll give you another sign. My God, that's back to the scripture that I uh, taught a couple of weeks ago. He said, if they don't believe the first sign, here's another sign. Listen, God keeps trying to tell you what it is you need to do for your life. Forgive yourself, forgive others. I talked about that in the session one of this video. You got to forgive yourself. You got to forgive yourself. You made that mistake. You made that decision. But you can't keep beating yourself up and allowing other people to beat you up. That's back in verse one. What if they don't believe me? That I've changed. What if they don't believe me when I say I'm sorry? What if they don't believe me? That's on them. That's on them. You got to forgive yourself so that you can be free. You got to forgive yourself so that you can experience and walk into the new. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. You got to, you have to forgive yourself so that you can go free. Stop blaming yourself for other people's failures. For their failures. He didn't cheat because you didn't give him none. He had cheating in him. <laughs> Glory to God. He didn't leave you because you didn't know how to cook. He had leaving in him. He had running in his feet before he left you. Good God Almighty. She didn't act out on you and clown on you at Applebee's because you, you ordered her the wrong food. She clowned on you because clowning is in her. Yes. The Bible says... Even about our children. We look at our kids where they are acting like, if you think about it, that's probably how you was acting when you were a teenager or an adolescence. Listen, you must let go in this season. I'm telling you, God has so much for you. That, look, I, yeah, I was going to say, okay, amen. So God has so much for you that he has waiting on you. And because you keep holding on, to past hurts and past offenses and not forgiving and not letting go. And I'm not saying, you know, smile like it don't matter. Speak to it and keep it moving. Live the life that God has asked of you to live and throw that thing down. Let it go. Throw it down. Put it down like, G like Moses did. God asked him, what do you have in your hand? Moses says, I got a staff. I got something I'm leaning on. I got a crutch that I don't want to let go of. We understand the purpose of the staff for Moses, but we're using it in a spiritual context right here. What do you have in your hand that you're leaning on? What is your crutch? What, are, what has enabled you to keep behaving and acting and thinking the way that you do? And you think that that's okay, and it's not. Oh, that's just how such and such is. No, that ain't cute. You 50. You 40, you 30. When I was a child, I did childish things. But now that I'm an adult, I put those things away. Grow up. 2018, somebody hashtag that. Grow up. Let it go. Let it go. Forgive and let it go so that you can be free. God had to remind Moses in chapter 4 of Exodus who he was. Who gave you your mouth? Who gave you those hands? Who makes the deaf mute? Who opens blind eyes? Good God Almighty. Who makes people blind and who gives them sight? It's God. It's God who forgives you. And then you forgive yourself. I said it in the first session. He casts your sins as far as the east is from the west and he remembers them no more. So why are you still remembering them? Why are you still holding on to them? Why are you still beating yourself up? Why are you still allowing other people to beat you up? Somebody come with you with something you, and they need to, girl, you did this, man, you did that. Honey, I just, okay, this is what you need to say. Listen, God's forgiven me. I've forgiven me. Now I hope you forgive me because I asked you for forgiveness. And if you don't want to forgive me and if you don't want to let it go, just know that I'm not going to keep letting you take me back to who I used to be. Let it go. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So I promised you that this would only be 15 minutes. I mean, to 30 minutes, even though we did have all those buffering issues and our signal dropped and all of that. But this is what I want you to do. I asked you to come into this group this morning with a list of the things that you were going to let go of entering into 2018. What is it that you need to let go of? Fear, anxiety, Worry, doubt, are you walking in a spirit of lack? Are you living in a spirit of unforgiveness? 
Are you, uh, do you have a retaliation uh, uh, boiling up in you? Because there's somebody you want to get back at. What is it that you need to let go of in this season before you enter into 2018? Who is it that you need to forgive? Yourself? Someone else? A spouse? A mother? A father? What is it that you that you have um, enabled someone else in? In their bad behavior? In their disrespect? In their disobedience? You've kept saying, well, they're going to change. They're going to get it together sooner or later, but you won't speak to it. You won't love on it. You won't rub on it. You won't put the word to it, but you got to because love holds people accountable. Love holds people accountable. It is necessary. It is necessary for change that you hold people accountable. It is necessary for growth. That you hold someone accountable and someone holds you accountable. So entering into 2018, what is it that you need to let go of? An unforgiving heart. Amen. We'll pray in that vein. We will pray in that vein. What else do we need to let go of this, this coming into 2018? Listen, we got tomorrow and Sunday morning. We got tomorrow and Sunday morning. We got tomorrow and Sunday morning. What is it that you need to let go of? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I love you too. What is it that you need to let go of? We're letting go. We're growing up. We're holding ourselves accountable. Uh, yes, Lord, the fear of not succeeding in what needs to be done. I talked about that yesterday. My fear of success held me back. My fear of success limited me. Yeah, I was doing this, I was doing that, but because I, this fear of success, because I bless God, it has nothing to do with me. He's given me a couple of different talents. He's given me a couple of different abilities. And because I didn't want people to say things like, girl, you're doing too much. It don't take all that. Uh, you, you, you stay in your lane. Anxiety. We gonna come against that. Forgiving ourselves. Amen. We're gonna stand in agreement with that. But because I did not want people to say something, uh, you think you this, you think you that. I know I'm bold, and I will beat the devil up. I will come after every spirit that's coming after me and my family and my church and my pastor and my friends. Yes, I will. But there was a part of me several years ago that the Lord had to deal with me. First, he had to deal with me about people pleasing. I know, I know, I know. I'm just going, I'm being transparent about people pleasing. It wasn't so much about pleasing people as much as it was not wanting um, people to think that I thought I was more than what I was. But this is what the Lord showed me. Doubt and procrastination. We're going to pray against it. We're going to come and stand in agreement. We're letting those things go. What the Lord showed me was that what I know is what I know. What I know is what God has given me an understanding to know. He has given me the wisdom, the knowledge, the desire to research and to know. He's given me that. It sure ain't me. I mean, think about it. Moses wrote the Pentateuch, the five first books of the Bible. What? Paul wrote 13. Come on. You really, unless God calls you to do that, it really ain't what you trying to get up to do. So if God has given you multiple talents and multiple gifts and has given, you a vision, has given you a vision that is outside of yourself, that is more than what you know that you can accomplish, that has nothing to do with you. So you give God glory and not be afraid of the success that comes with the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God has given you. That's where I had to get to. And when I got there. I ran with my business vision focus. I ran with the business of ATK speakers and publishing firm where I train speakers and equip authors and publish their books and to publish my own books. Come on, somebody. I ran with T-Tape Ministries. I ran and will keep running. I already told y'all I didn't jump, honey. I didn't jump and I didn't pull my parachute and I'm going to come down for a good, safe landing. Everything that God has for me and everything that God has for you, he expects you to go and get it. He expects you to live out your hyphen. He expects you to let go of things so that you can get to the things that he has for you. And if you don't have the strength to do it, you are here this morning connecting with us so that you can. What is it that you need to let go of? We're getting ready to pray. 
We getting ready to pray. We getting ready to pray. We getting ready to pray. Hallelujah. And we going to call those things that are not as though they are. So I don't pray, Lord, help, Lord, help y'all who know me. No, I don't do that. If we need help, we need help. But we praying in the affirmative that it is done and it is so. So, Father, right now we come in agreement that anxiety has been released off of their life. The person who put up anxiety, I need you to do this for me. I need you to breathe out of your mouth three times. Take three breaths. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Take them and release them slow. And as you are releasing them, I want you to say, anxiety, go in Jesus' name. Anxiety, go in Jesus' name. Fear and worry and doubt, go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that you have put replaced peace where anxiety was. We thank you that you have placed God faith where worry and doubt and insecurity was. Hallelujah. Because they are the beloved in Jesus' name. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We forgive ourselves this morning. We let go. You can Cast our sins as far as the east is from the west and you remember them no more. Today, we will not remember them. We cast them as far as the east is from the west. They never touch. East and west never encounter each other. You will get to north and south long, never before you get back to east and west unless you turn around. Hallelujah. There will be no turning around. We will not go back to weak and miserable ways. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we let it go this morning. We let it go so that we can live for God. We let it go. We let this go so that we can get to that. We let this go so that we can get to that, to what he has for us. In the name of Jesus, we let this go so that we can get to that. We let this relationship go. We let this hurt go. We let these this negative negativity and those negative words go so that we can live for God today. We let it go. We let it go so that we can get what God has for us. In the name of Jesus, we bless your name this morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. We let it go this morning so that we can live for God. Bless your name this morning. You are worthy to be praised, oh God. Let me tell you how good and faithful God is when you let some stuff go. You, Many of you know my journey of waiting on God and trying to wait right on God and seeking God to just make me right before my husband comes and taking this journey of abstinence of long, long, many, many years that I thought I would be waiting, but we wait on God and we wait right in him. But I remember that as I prayed, I want somebody to do this about, and it ain't like it was tons of them, but, but the men that I had been with even just kissed, not had been intimate with, but had kissed. I asked God to purge them from me, release them from me. The ones way back 20 years, Jesus, let me see, 40 years, let me see, I'm 50, 45 years ago, 45 years, would that be right? That be right? No, that would be, I would be five. That wouldn't be right. Good God almighty. So you're looking at 30, 30, 35 years ago, every man, every man, even down to, as I said, the ones that I even kissed, I said, God purge them from me to the point that I would encounter men that I had dated, went on a date with, maybe kids had been in relationship with all of that, that they would be like, you don't remember me, do you? This is the truth. And my girlfriends, my friend girls will tell you. And I'll be like, did I date him? Did I go out with him? In college, did I date him? My roommates be like, yeah, Tuesday, you dated him and his name is such and such. Now, dating don't mean that you had sex with everybody. I'm just saying. But men that I had been in relationships with, three months, six months, a year, I'm like, what is their name? Because God will cast it as far as the east is from the west and you ain't got to remember it. You ain't got to remember it. Hallelujah. He will cast that thing. He will cast that hurt. He will cast that disappointment. He will cast that failure. He will cast that dream. Hallelujah. That you holding on to that hasn't come to pass. Somebody say yet. He will cast it. Because he loves you. He doesn't want you tormented by your past. By the things that you need to let go of. So Father we thank you today. And we love you. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you for those who held in there this morning, even with all of the technical difficulties, not being able to connect. Hallelujah. And then we connect and it drops us. Hallelujah. So we thank you. I want you to understand, beloved, that sometimes, well, I would almost say most of the time, 
The sicknesses and the infirmities that attack our body are because of the things that we are still holding on to. It will come and manifest itself physically in your body. I remember when I was diagnosed with Graves' disease. It's a hormonal disease. And I did research spiritually. And it's that condition is attached to self-hate. And I remember growing up as a little girl saying, I hate my lips. I hate my nose. I hate my hair. And I find myself in my 20s diagnosed with a disease that is spiritually attached to self-hate, rejection, abandonment. Rejection because of an encounter that I had with my father at eight years old. What he, or that encounter, placed a spirit of rejection in my heart. I, I understand the physical things that that are. Listen, none none of you, many of you on here have physical um, infirmities in your body, but you didn't say you were going to let that go. Many of you have debt, but you didn't say you were going to let that go. You have to let go of what it is that has you bound, that causes you to not move fully ahead in your purpose towards your destiny so that you can get what God has for you, what he has promised you. So I declare the release of debt over our lives, owing no man nothing but love. The debt, emotional debt, Physical debt, spiritual debt, whatever it is, we let it go this morning. And we will join us, we will come back together to again, again tomorrow to look at whatever scripture the Lord wakes me up with to say this is what we will share and what we will discuss. When you have a chance, look at Exodus 4. What do you have in your hand? Moses said, I have a staff. What, do you, what is your crutch? What are you holding on to? What do you need to let go of so that you can release it and get the instruction, the strategy from God of what it is you are to do with your life, how you are to move in 2018? How are you to move and moving forward and progressing in your life? I thank you for joining me. Uh, TTM, T Tape Ministries welcomes you to upcoming events. We do have in April our men's conference that is coming up, our Father Forum Men's Conference, uh, and that's going to be exciting. Women will be invited. It's an all day conference, 8 to 4, but women will be invited at 2 p.m. for a special session for 2 p.m. So just hold on to your hats as more information comes. Uh, we are doing the speakers training. On April, um, January the 26th through the 28th, please register if you have any interest in being uh, a speaker. Just learning to be more comfortable speaking in front of your uh, staff at work, in front of your team at work, doing presentations. Or maybe you do want to conquer the mic and be a professional speaker. And then we have our author's training uh, in March, March the 3rd, I believe, uh, because uh, we will be launching our next book. Uh, the mornings after as uh, 12 to 14 authors come together to share their story about uh, the loss, uh, the transition of a loved one. And I would welcome you, any of you who are interested in being a part of a book collaboration, to join us in that book. And then we have our second book of 2018, um, Intentional Increase. This book is for professionals who are maybe in corporate America, who have progressed in their corporate position and would like to just share with someone how they did it to help someone else. It is for entrepreneurs who want to give a tip to someone on how to achieve success as an entrepreneur or and someone who stepped out and launched their own ministry and how did they do that to help someone else know how to do it. So this is what uh, my life is about, just helping other people find purpose and live out their hyphen to the fullness and the glory of God. I will see you tomorrow, 830, 830. Come whatever may, the Lord says the same. We will be here tomorrow at 830, talking about letting it go, letting go of this, 
so that you can get that. And also, there is a part one to this because um, the, the line dropped. So go back and listen to that about letting it go and um, just letting go and forgiving yourself and, and moving forward in what God has for you. I love you all. I appreciate you. Share this with someone. Invite someone to be with us tomorrow. Tag someone and be blessed as we come in to 2018 we are going to give if the dev the devil's a spirit but uh if he was not and he has some eyes we're gonna give him a black eye because we're gonna start walking in our authority we are going to start walking in the love and the grace and the blessings and the favor that god has for us and we ain't got to be jealous of nobody we ain't got to be competing with nobody because there is more than enough the earth is the lord's the fullness of, of everything that dwells therein he has a cattle on a thousand hills a thousand hills okay a bunch of cattle and some of it is yours amen god bless you i love you with the love of the lord have a wonderful friday god bless